Before this session, I actually um, asked my fans and my followers on Instagram what they are the most interested in. And um, one of the most frequent answers that I got was about my, uh, my song Lost Soul that I released on Protocol Recordings. Uh, and a lot of people were asking to give an insight on the production of this particular song. So that's what I want to do right now. Uh, so I opened the session and um, this song, uh, I, I produced it in 2019, in like April or May, I guess it was. Uh, so it's been a while. I haven't even actually been on this project ever since then. So I also have to navigate it a bit. But I can definitely explain to you the, um, the layering and uh, all the synths and the bass as well. Um, it's quite a heavy project, a lot of processing of the sounds and stuff. It's a yeah, more complex uh, track, track, which is uh, what happens mostly with those melodic tracks. They are more complex to produce most of the time than uh, um, the more simple club bangers, you know? So um, that's why it's also interesting to look into it. All right, so... Um, so let me first play you a section of the break part, and uh, then we're going to look into the sounds um, of uh, yeah the verse section, the chorus, and then the build up. So it sounds like this. Under the source inside the dream, I see you staring back at me. Over the hills into the wild, I hear your voices calling me. Wherever you. Um, all right, so uh, first of all, how you know how maybe I want to uh, explain quickly how I got the inspiration for the song and how I approached it. It really started with this acoustic guitar that came along. The, the songwriters who uh, wrote the, the vocal and recorded it also recorded this acoustic guitar. Um, and maybe first I should play you the original recording. Originally, it sounded like this. That's one element, and then uh, there was a second guitar, this ambience guitar here, and those together really uh, create some magic, and that was where the inspiration started. So again, let me try play the original. So both together. So instantly, when I listened to this, I instantly got that vibe and that feeling um, uh, that, you know, something emotional about those two elements, and I really liked that, and then um, that's really what inspired me for basically the entire production of the song. Um, so, a couple of things. Maybe what's really interesting to get started is um, the vocal processing, because that's quite a lot of stuff on it. Um, and that's also a question that I get a lot of times, so it's maybe cool to explain it quickly. Um, so, this is the verse vocal here. Under the source, inside the dream, I see you staring back at me. Over the head. This is an interesting EQ right there. Uh, I'll get to that later. Let me first show you the main chain here. So everything is routed into this vocal group. A lot of uh, compression, EQing, uh, compression again, de here and stuff. So let's get started. This is the first uh, multiband compressor in the chain. Under the source, inside the dream. Maybe I'll first... I'm gonna turn off all the effects. 
and then we'll go through it one by one. Okay. Under the source, inside the dream, I see you staring back at me. Over the hills into the wild. Yeah, so this is the original recording. The original recording already had some, you can hear it, a delay and a reverb on it, uh, like a tape delay thing. And I really like that delay, so I left it on it and started processing it from there. And it also created an interesting effect because all the compression and effects that I'm adding are, you know, added on, on this whole thing, including the tape delay. Uh, so that sounded really interesting then. So um, when we get started now, this is just, this is like a de basically. So it's a multiband compressor uh, compre compressing the, the top end. Um, it's like a pretty fast attack uh, with a medium release time. Maybe a quick word about multiband compression and how I would set the attack and release times. I mean, it always depends on your material, of course. But generally speaking, um, when you have the frequency spectrum from low to high, another way of thinking about it is also in terms of speed. So actually you are looking at slow frequencies to fast frequencies. It's a different perspective on the, on the, on the same thing. And now when you think about high frequencies being fast frequencies, it means that when you're working with a multiband compressor here, you usually want to work with fast times also because you got to grab those fast frequencies quickly, right? So uh, that's why the attack time here is very fast. So as soon as a sharp S sounds coming in from the vocal, the compressor starts grabbing it and also is having a fairly fast release time. And uh, yeah, like ratio here, you just got to play around with and dial it into an amount where it sounds natural. If you overdo the de effect on vocals, it's gonna start to sound like uh, someone speaking like this, you know? So it's like you're de too much and then that doesn't sound good at all. Um, Under the source, inside the dream, so this is a good amount here. I see you staring back at uh, second is an EQ, just lifting the mids a little bit, which is where the tonality, this is like around one kilohertz, around one to, uh, between one to two kilohertz, that's where uh, usually the tonality of a male vocal lies. And when you're going a bit higher, that's for female vocals. Uh, Under the source, inside the dream, I see you staring back at me. Under the soul. This EQ, what is it doing? It seems, Under looks, uh, okay, now here. Okay, this is just doing a little bit of a bottom lift. Under the souls, inside the dream. On 200 hertz. Under the souls. If I exaggerate it. Under the souls, inside the dream. I see you staring back at me. Yeah, because without, it sounded a little bit thin on the bottom end.